What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Scratch Agency Podcast, hosted by Scratch Agents for Scratch Agents. My name is Stephen Turnbull, founder of T5 Insurance Services in Utica, New York, and I'm joined by my co-host, the one and only, you already know, Mr. Sean Fitzgerald from LAF Advisors in Long Island, New York. What's going on today, Mr. Fitzgerald? How are we doing down there? Whew, feeling great, man. We just had a, a long conversation with uh, Brett Young over at Urban Young. I mean, that I, I was fired up after that one. I mean, that was a real lifting, motivating conversation. And I feel like it makes you think like, man, am I thinking big enough mm-hmm. after that conversation? That's kind of what was going through my head. So I, I'm, I'm ready, man. I'm ready Look to run through a, a wall, wall on this one. <laughs> there you go. I got Troy, send me those sunglasses after, by the way. Uh, you got it, Sean. <laughs> well, we got a great show today. We're excited to welcome Troy Thompson on the show. And I want to talk about this particular point. But we do a little bit of research on everybody before the show, and I went I went to Troy's Facebook, and I wanted to see what you know what was Troy's official title on Facebook. Troy is part of the team at Pinnacle Insurance Agency of Minnesota, so I want to talk about that when we get into the episode. But Troy, thank you for joining us today on the Scratch Agency Podcast. How are Thanks, you today? Steve. I'm great, Stephen. I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. Bring the fire. Bring the heat. I don't know if I can match Brett Young, but I'll do my best. <laughs> well, for folks who are just learning a little bit about you, let's just talk about Troy, how you got into the insurance space. We'll talk about the business and some other things we want to dive into. All right, here we go. Um, well, I like this picture. I have this picture on my, for those that are watching will understand this, on my computer monitor. That's my dad with the big glasses <laughs> back in like 1980. He was a farmer's agent. And this picture always reminds me of uh, Michael Scott and his boss in the office when Michael had the uh, fanny pack on and he was getting some sort of award. But I got very lucky. So unlike your podcast, I never was a scratch agent. I kind of was a scratch agent because my dad was a farmer's agent for like 25, 30 years. And he went independent when he was 62 years old. And so it took some big balls to do that. Most of those agents just want to ride off and keep those checks coming in as long as they can. My dad started scratch at 62 and I joined him like a year or two later. It just made too much sense uh, knowing that you know, everybody's a prospect. You can save most people money. It seemed like a no brainer. I was a big door to door guy. So I was like, why can't I just go to door and sell insurance? Um, so the rest is history. And that was probably 15 years ago or so, 16 years ago, I started, um, I think it was January of 08. And in Minnesota, as we all know, it was probably zero degrees out. And I just started knocking and and, and um, getting about three to five leads an hour on the first day. It's so easy when you knock on doors. And uh, that's how I helped grow the business with my dad and um, bought him out probably six or seven years ago. And now it's just me and up to 10 employees. We're about 12 million in premium. And uh, it's been so, it's been a fun ride. It, it sounds like you and Ryan Hanley have the same business model, you know, knocking on doors. Really? Um, Troy, <laughs> no, no, no. He's yeah, like, that's a good point. It's like YouTube <laughs> leads, you know. Uh, <laughs> but Troy, Troy, what did you do? What did you do prior yeah. to the insurance world? You, you said you had some experience knocking on doors. Yeah, I've knocked on doors my whole that. life. Um, company Southwestern. I'm- have any of the books in here but basically educational books when i was in college i would go away for the summer to different states and literally knock on doors for 80 plus hours every single week and um sell these books to help kids with school and um i think my best summer i made like twenty five thousand dollars. so it was pretty good in the you know end of the 90s early 2000s and then I kind of dovetailed that knocking on doors for Comcast or Quest or somebody like that, and or both of them actually, and then right into insurance from there. But I still knock on doors to this day. I've been out a handful of times this year with some of my producers. It's it's almost easier than ever now, if you can believe that. So tell that to Hanley. Hanley says it's all <laughs> digital, which digital works, right? But guess what? Analog works better than ever too, because nobody knocks on doors because everybody yep. says go digital. Yeah. yeah. No, it's super interesting. But Steven, we talk about it every episode, how there's just so many different ways to do it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, 
that's why Hanley came to mind instantly because it's like so polar opposite, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But that's an interesting story. So t tell us a little about a little bit about the door knocking because Stephen, that's not a subject we've touched on yet, right? <laughs> no, nope, not at all. No. I think you're the only no. agent that's knocking on doors that I know of. I love no I love door knocking because, and I'm a personal lines agency. We're ninety percent personal lines. Um, I really do. Sean, you're talking about getting into the, you know, the commercial, the bigger premiums. I do want to and need to get into commercial someday. I hope to do that, but I like personal lines. It's very linear and yeah. knocking on doors. You go, you're going to talk to the decision maker when you're knocking on the door of, of you know, personal lines home, you can yeah. self underwrite the house. You know, if it's a clean, well-kept yard, not a bunch of junk, pit bulls, trampolines, roof all the way down you're like mm. if it's good you're knocking if you don't like the looks of that house go to the next house that's all you have to do and all you say is hey i'm troy with pinnacle insurance this is how simple it is i'm troy with pinnacle insurance i bet i could save you money on your auto and home insurance i even say it slower though i'm this will literally be how i do it hi i'm troy with pinnacle insurance i bet i could save you money on your auto and home insurance and I have nothing in my hand other than my cell phone because I listen to podcasts as I'm door knocking. But then I'll shut up. And then one of you guys will say something, either yes or yeah, no. How much are you going to bet me? No. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times they're like, okay. <laughs> then I pull out my notepad. And this is an actual notepad that I've used. Whoops. With names, phone numbers, address, oh, man, all that stuff. I pull it out of my pocket and I'll just break eye contact, phone number, your state farm. I'll call you this time tomorrow. What's your best email address? I already know their address. Any other quick bits of information, but I do set up that appointment for the phone call um, and uh, go to the next door. I love it. Thank them, move on. And so you, you, you've done that since you started with your father, how many years ago? You said 2008? Yeah. Yeah. And literally, like I said, I went out for a couple hours with Jay, one of my new producers, just like a month ago. And in an hour and a half, we got 10 leads. <laughs> Great. So. I wonder, I, I mean, that's gotta, I mean, David talks about it a lot with, um, I, you know, like walking and talking, sort of speak on the, uh, on the commercial front. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're door knocking off, on personal, you know, marketing drop. you can probably make an easy transition. You know? I know. <laughs> I know. And I was just talking to Acuity the other day, and we're going to sign up for their service center. And that's one of the big reasons I didn't really want to necessarily get into commercial because we don't focus yeah. on it for service. But Acuity is one of our bigger commercial carriers. They do a great job, and they have a whole service center. I can sell it and then hand it off to them. They make proactive phone calls. They do all kinds of things that other service centers don't do. So that really got me excited. So you, oh, and, really Han so you and Hanley are like with the service centers. You're oh, right, yeah. Sean. I'm service centered out, <laughs> man. Other than nationwide, they're, they suck. We're going to get out of their service center. Mm -hmm. Traveler, Safeco, Acuity. I don't know what's going on with nationwide. They just don't want to do any business or help anyone. Yeah. So let's, let's have let, great experience with the travelers one. Let's talk for a second about taking your producers out. Because I'm assuming for for the first trip, this is probably the first time your producers have door knocked. Is yeah, that assumption probably correct. You know, are, are they are they hesitant to do it? Kind of how does that walk us through how that works? Um, they don't like doing it on their own. That's why I let them come out with me, and I just let them stand. You know, um, Beth De La Forest. Mm -hmm. She's in Wisconsin. Order. You should interview her. She's awesome. Uh, but Beth and one of her producers came out, and they followed me. These you know, cute blonde women standing behind me as I'm knocking on doors. <laughs> but when I'm door knocking, they, I say, first of all, don't stand right next to me. You got to be five feet behind me. And I give them, I'm a side profile, probably 10 feet um, in front of the door myself. So I'm like, just keep your mouth shut. I'll do the talking. And then we talk between doors, but I'll do my pitch and everything. And I'll get the, the lead and I let them watch. That's how I do it when people follow me. And then we just talk between doors. I actually, um, you know, I do like doing that. It keeps, it's, it keeps me accountable and I probably get more leads though when I'm not with people cause I can go faster, but, um, it doesn't really impact me. So they see me do it and then they're like, well, he can do it. We can do it. And mm -hmm. 
And I'm like, you go across the street, we'll meet. I'll go this side, you go that side. We'll meet in the middle, and then we'll talk about how we did. And I then eventually it. you got to get them to do it. But that's, it's not for everyone. That's why, I mean, I'm, I'm for any agency. Anybody around the country can fly out and we'll knock on doors for two, three hours a night. And you can see how I do it. That'll get me probably 10 to 15 leads and you can learn how I do it. But it's definitely not rocket science. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> what, what do you think uh, you knock on 10 doors, right? What do you think that the ratio looks like? You get two leads, three leads? one lead it all depends on how many people you talk to talk to 10 okay. people five leads sell wow. one yeah but the good thing is even those people you don't get to talk to you have all their data so mm -hmm. i got 10 people with their cell phone their best email even okay. if i only talked to three and sell one was it worth my time in an hour mm -hmm. where i could have paid 100 bucks a lead and <laughs> right you know yeah. and you know, these are free leads. So it's the warmest free it's they get because they're warm because you've already met them and shook their hand and petted their dog. <laughs> so let's like let, let, now, you, you know, you said you're not a scratch agent, but you did take over the agency from your father. Right. And, yeah. And let's talk about that process, because uh, certainly in my experience of a family agency and others that I've heard of that, that that could sometimes be harder than the scratch itself. You know, how was that process of taking over the, the, the family business? And was there drastic changes that you made, things that you implemented? What did that look like for you? Yeah. Well, there's horror stories out there. Like my dad and brother-in-law actually started the agency, and I don't even talk to my brother-in-law anymore. <laughs> he left, you know, right when I took over with my dad as partners. Um, so... I got lucky in comparison. It, it gets stressful though. My dad, as most older people, wasn't tech savvy, would be yelling about what his password is for XYZ company five to 10 times a day. And it was just driving everyone crazy. It was time. And I was lucky enough for him to understand that it was time. And I'm paying him a big check. I think it's eight and a half years of a huge check every month. So he didn't just give me anything. But I'm um, still very, very lucky and blessed to have had the opportunity to buy him out. And we're still great friends. He's actually kind of partners on an Airbnb that he just um, bought here um, today, I think. So I'm helping him with that, which is a whole nother shit show. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, I got lucky in a lot of respects with being able to buy my dad out. He, it was time. My mom was going through health problems, too. So he knew he couldn't just come to the office and have her home alone. And so, so how, how was that process for you of, of taking over the helm? Of taking over the office? Taking, yeah, taking over everything, you know, building, you know, building the team around modernization or stuff like that. How yeah, that I mean, I'm not a super tech guy, but, and everybody, I was, based, I was a partner with my dad. So we had cycled through all the prior employees. They were all employees that I helped hire at the time. It was time to take him over, take over for him. So we really didn't skip a beat. It, you know, we got great employees. I don't know how we do it, but that might be why we get a lot of Google reviews, which we're going to talk about too. And I can't wait to talk to you about that because I had, I put the question out here, um, how we got so many reviews because I still don't know, and I can read them off as we're talking about that part of the interview. So yeah, people just seem to rally, rally around our culture and here's our core values. Well, let's, I mean, well, let's dive right into that because that is, yeah, see, look at that. We have, we have fun, fun. Right, we Steve, have each Steven. other's back and we grow nice and yeah. simple. Two seconds. I just got to share since we're, we, we were talking about old people and technology. <laughs> I, have a, I, I have a, I have a funny story at my, at my last agency speaking of not knowing the password and things like that, which used to happen all the time, this older gentleman like runs into my office and he goes, Sean, Sean, my, my, my toaster isn't working. My toaster is not working. Toaster. And I like, I'm like, your toaster, what the hell is he cooking? So like, I, you know, I go into his office and he's like pointing to his, the tower of his computer. And I'm like, that's not a toaster. That's like, that's, you know, the main frame of your computer. Oh, that's the tower, okay. not the toaster. You're putting his bread oh, in there? What'd you say? Yeah, right. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, man. It's in the computer. <laughs> it's, yeah, right. 
So, oh, good God. But sorry, Stephen, I cut you off. No, 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 you're good. So I want I want to jump right into what we were talking about because I was scrolling through Facebook last week or the week before or whatever it was and saw the post that Troy shared of his team hitting their thousandth Google review, which is impressive in wow. itself. And that's very impressive. But for me, that wasn't really the most impressive part of it. The impressive part was, and I, I, I and all listeners go to Troy's Facebook to, to watch this video, but the impressive part was how excited his team was about it. His team oh, yeah. member is jumping out of her chair, screaming, <laughs> we got it, excited, excited, excited. And I think of that, we talk a lot about cultural shifts or how to build the right culture of the team and how to get buy-in. And it's obvious you have that buy-in. So, you know, I wanted to just talk about mm -hmm. that post in itself. Like, tell us how, why, how, how did it all happen? Like the process, how you get the team buy-in and let's have a conversation around that. Mm -hmm. Well, we started trying to get Google reviews probably more or fat earlier than a lot of other agencies. And that helped us get off to a good start. Um, I know we're the, we have the most Google reviews in the state of Minnesota for an insurance agency. So we're, we're proud of that. And that doesn't, wow, nice. as we all know, Google, it doesn't hurt to have a lot of Google reviews, especially in this market. We get yep. three to five leads a day for free when people are just searching save money on my auto and home insurance, even though we're scrambling on the back end to keep our clients with this crazy market, but um, process, just the buy and we started early, we, you know, one of the gimmicky things we kind of started doing to get the ball rolling was we would send people like a $5 caribou gift card, if they gave us a Google review. But then what I, what I changed, and this is something everybody should do is when you get that commitment on the phone, because everybody says they're gonna give you that Google review and then maybe 10 to 20% do, you send them that gift card right away and thank them so much for the great review. And then when they get it in two days, then they're gonna be like, all right, now I have to because they've already thanked me for this Google review. So they'll go do it for the most part. Uh -huh. um, that's kind of how we got got kick started doing it we were just almost bribing people to do it and then we got away from even sending gift cards it seemed or yeah it just seemed like we were getting so many reviews that we didn't need anything to any incentive um um got a whole, a whole you know a lot of things i could talk about i could talk about our email signature one of the things is uh in the signature and i'll try to give this to you guys and you can get it to your network if you want um like Leah's signature says, write me a review and my boss will give me a tip. And then there's like a little smiley face. And that seems to work a lot. People love helping someone out and knowing. And we do hook our employees up too when they get reviews. We give them a big fat bonus for the thousand. That might have been a reason they were so excited too, because they knew they were right. going to get some more money. Um, uh, getting those reviews, what can I say? I can go through, I just put this on Slack before our podcast started and I got probably 30 responses from our team. I was like, going to be a podcast in eight minutes. I want to know how they want to know how we got a thousand reviews. Please tell me how we did it. And you know, genuine interest. That's all the same things you guys hear. I mean, genuine yeah. interest in helping our clients get the best coverage for their situation at the best rate. Willingness to cheerfully add vehicles and toys to a policy on a late Friday afternoon to make sure they can go out and enjoy them on the weekend. Taking the time to look for big buck discounts that they might have missed. Jack said, good lucks. Tina said, <laughs> Leah, having a good conversation with the client and asking for the, you gotta ask for the Google review. Don't be afraid to ask, right? Oh yeah, that's the, I, that's, that's I mean, that's to me the biggest thing. And like, I can Steven, just... when you and I have talked about like how we've gotten our, our reviews, full disclosure, Steven has over a hundred and he's been in business, what, a, a little over a year and I have like 80 and I've been in business for three years. So I always give Steven kudos. Thanks for pointing that and out. One that's of the biggest, was, Sean. Appreciate it. No problem. You're going no after problem. the big I, buck I, commercial, right, Sean? You don't I, have I, as many yes. clients. There, there you go. You're not um, helping, Sean. But when Steve, or Troy. Yeah, when when Stephen and I talk about the process, like, hey, how do you get your Google reviews? How do I get mine? Blah blah. I would say the biggest difference is I have mine kind of like in automation through my CRM and whatnot. But Stephen always asks. He always asks for the review, and he'll show, he'll send me screenshots. This is how you do it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that I that it sounds easy, 
but if it was easy, everyone would do it and everyone would have a thousand reviews, right? But let's, let's dive deeper here, Troy, into the team. I mean, even, yeah. even if you watch that video, even if there was a bonus incentive, there's more than that in that video of the excitement of the team did this. Mm -hmm. We hit our goal. And there's so much buzz and there's so much talk about whether you're developing a team or you've taken over an agency and you have a new team or whatever it is about creating that culture, creating that buzz and everybody rowing that boat the same direction. Talk yeah. to us about that and how, and, and how you're doing that so well. Mm. Well, even in that question I just posed on Slack, they were referring to this. So we really incorporate these three simple core values. We have fun have each other's back and we grow. They all said that in this string of how we got to our thousand Google reviews. So trying to tie it in to your core values. We talk about our core values all the time. That's Matt and Zach from GNN. We went through their Babylon pro process probably five years ago. And that was a really good, like the traction method EOS. Do you guys do yeah. that? Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Yeah. So on top of that, every single meeting, every single week, we would talk about our thousand Google reviews. So I'm sure they were just sick of it. And then when we got to 980, it really felt Google started playing weird tricks with their algorithm or every time we would get a new one, um, it was almost like, is it Yelp where they take the reviews away? It felt they took so many, we would get one, we'd be 982. And then the next day we'd be down to 980. Then we get another one, we get 983, then we'd be down to 981. And we were so confused, but we just said, screw it. Let's just not complain to Google. Let's just keep. Our, put our foot down and get to this thousand. We went like two months at the 980 level, which was weird. Mm -hmm. But um, that was one of the reasons they were so excited because we were just getting so frustrated that we couldn't break through to the to the thousand. But living the core values, having each other's back, paying each other a good wage. I mean, we, we pay them a lot. We gave them on top of that bonus for the thousand. We just paid them a really big raise. We just gave them a big raise because all of our agencies are making a lot of money. If you're at a $10 million agency, you don't add one policy, but you maintain all of them for a year, you'll be a $12 million agency. So that's like $240,000 of additional revenue, 250. Why not share that a little bit with the team if you're working so hard to maintain your clients? I don't care if we're paying them more than the average. You know, let's yeah. let's be a team and pay each other. That goes back to why I say I'm part of the team. I don't like telling people I'm the founder or the owner or the CEO or anything like that. We're all on the same team. Yeah. PJ Flex, Troy, roll the boat. Mm -hmm. Troy, yeah. Tell me, tell me about so when you so bringing it back uh, to the beginning, so to speak, uh, when you first started getting into the insurance space, what is some of the biggest or the biggest struggle that you came across, and how how did you kind of overcome that? Because I think those those are the stories that like resonate the most uh, with our listeners. So what do you think was a big struggle you had? Sorry, my kids are just walking in the office. They let my dog in. The biggest struggle, <laughs> you want to see, come here, Hank. This is Hank. He's my sheep -a doodle <laughs> First, first <laughs> puppy on the Sky Shades Deep podcast, Hank. Very true. <laughs> but, um, the biggest love struggle, it. I love knocking on doors and I always think, too many new guys, they way overthink policy language and mm -hmm. automation or whatever. And they'll sit in their office for six months or a year studying that stuff. You know what will make you succeed? The day one, you do what I did and go knock on doors and get 10 leads. Worry about the automation between all the leads you're getting. The leads are the start of your agency. If you can't get leads, or if you think you need to buy and spend thousands of dollars on um, nut quotes or whatever, you're going to go broke, go knock on doors, get a bunch of free leads and figure out how insurance works as you're working leads to make you money. I mean, yeah, not, I feel know, like, I, I feel like that's, um, I don't want to say getting thrown into the fire, but I feel like that would be probably the fastest way to learn insurance is, yeah. And it's you're fun. just throwing it in front of you. Yeah. You're like, I just is met this fun? great guy <laughs> who's with farmers and he says he's paying too much. Let's learn how to sell it now. Let's run it through the quarter, the rater and save him money. And guess what? I can save him a thousand bucks. I just learned how to do a quote too. Now I'm going to go have him. You don't even have to go back when I started. You had to have them sign paper apps. So, uh, 
Now it's just you Good click a button, boom, you're off to the races. Yeah. Then get 10 more leads the next day, and then the next day, and then the next day. Don't get complacent with, oh, I got 10 leads, now I can just chill and work my leads for two weeks, and then you lose your momentum of the funnel, the lead gen. That's mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. And so what my wife would do, one of my biggest challenges was I didn't like knocking on doors. Nobody does. So she would br bring me to the middle of the neighborhood and drop me off so I wouldn't have a car. <laughs> so, and then she would come back in three hours when I got oh, 10, 20 leads. So I was like, all right. And then, you know, the hardest door is getting out of your car door. So mm, fair enough. that was well, uh, what, what time do you do that. knocking? Is there a time you do it? Anytime. Especially now with COVID, half the yeah. people are home, half the people are working during the day at home. So go ahead, go knock at nine in the morning, noon, two, four, five at night. You're not gonna, most people aren't eating dinner right at five or six. You, you just never know when they're eating. So don't think you don't wanna interrupt their dinner. Who cares? Run through their yards. <laughs> they mow their lawn. Don't be, you're not gonna offend them by running through their yard and walking all the way down the driveway. and. I've gone to three houses by the time you get done with your first. Mm. I, we so, got a so. sidebar here because I just learned recently that my wife's been listening to all of our episodes and she doesn't need an excuse to just drop me in the middle of a neighborhood. So this just isn't going to work in New York, Michaela. Okay. This is not, not something that's going to work in New York. <laughs> Except New York. That's just, there's a law. You know, people talk about permits and all that bullshit too. It's just a stupid excuse. You don't need a permit, even if the city says you do. If a cop comes, which they rarely do, I'm like, I have business cards in this. I don't have a contract for them to sign. I'm just handing out my cards. Mm -hmm. They're not going to. You think they care if you're presentable and trying to feed your family with all the shit going on in the world, all the right. real problems that they're going to try to bust you and throw you in jail? How many times do you get the cops called on you? In my life, I don't know, 50. It's never been a problem. Right. It's not one kind of problem. Did you just, did, you just said 50 very nonchalantly. Like that's, <laughs> like, that's not a lot. Yeah, only 50, only 50 times. Only been arrested for I only went 50. to jail eight times. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been arrested too. I've been to jail, but not for legit for business. Not, not for door knocking. <laughs> that's another story. Oh man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, Troy, let's pivot a little bit to uh, Savital. Tell us about that project. Tell us how it how it came to life and uh, what's new with it. People that maybe haven't yeah. heard about it at all, talk to us about that. Well, thanks for asking, Stephen. That's kind of my baby, and it works well. You guys have your podcast, so you're not selling insurance right now. Um, the reason virtual professionals work, and there's a lot of great companies out there, Priestman, Cass, lots of good guys that I think have great businesses too, but you get a virtual assistant, virtual professional, virtual employee, they allow you to do more things you wanna do. So I had a meeting at lunch today for um, my kid's football team. I'm meeting with one of the coaches on devising a strategy for the season. And then I picked him up from uh, baseball practice. Now I'm talking to you guys. A lot of people are just so in the business that they can't break free and do other fun things that yeah. bring them them joy in life. And that's, you know, I found somebody great, a couple of people that are, that are great people. And we decided to start a virtual assistant company in Pakistan. Um, we started with six people. Now we have 160. Wow. And we had a great month this month. I think we've already signed up 10 or 12 new clients. So, uh, um, it's been fun. I was out to Pakistan here, uh, in February and I might be going back in October with David Crothers, who has some, um, ownership in our company as well. Nice. Nice. Troy, what do you find, uh, agents using virtual assistants for the most? Is it, uh, it taking phone calls? Yeah. Is it doing certificates? Like, what do you think are like the top two or three, like most wanted reasons for having one? Well, we do embrace the phone calls. We have Natasha and Amina on our team. They answered a lot of those for Google reviews too. They, they really, like Natasha just said, our amazing team and customers. We have a bunch of wonderful VPs who are super supportive with the back end stuff. So the heroes on the front line can assist our value customers. Hmm. So our, even our virtual professionals have the buy-in of our pinnacle team. Um, 
I, I just forgot what I was going to talk about, Sean. What was your question? <laughs> um, the, the virtual professionals, like what are, what are the two tasks okay. you think that the agents are asking for Amina, the most? They answer phones for us okay. and they do the changes for us. So that, that's their role. And they answer 60, 70% of our phone calls, which is great. We have okay. the service centers. So we dovetail the service centers with our virtual professionals. A lot of times they just route straight to the service centers if they call us. Um, Hussein does all our quoting. He does 60, 70 new business and requotes a week. So wow. with all the requotes we're doing, we don't have to have our service team do that. They just, he just tees it up for them and then they'll present it to the client. Same with the new business with the sales team. He'll run it through the top two carriers, run the uh, order the reports, MVRs, and then uh, the sales team will take it from there and present it to the new business clients. So. Okay. That managing our social media, they help with our Google reviews. So we not only get our Google, I hate answering Google reviews, even though I love our clients. I don't want to take the time to write a nice long Google review. So they go into the Google My Business account, put two, three, four sentences with emojis and stuff answering the Google review. Then they take that review and put it into Canva, make it look beautiful, and then they'll post it on our social media. So we really leverage those Google reviews rather than just nice. keep them in Google. Why not put them on Facebook and LinkedIn and everything? Yeah. And then Troy, what about the training for the VA? Like the Savital, um, like uh, for instance, let's say I'm like, hey, I would love to, to onboard a VA from Savital to mainly answer phone calls, yeah. right? And, and help with it. Do they like, is there training behind the scenes? We do put them through some insurance training, a couple of weeks of training to learn the okay. basics of, ins of insurance. Yeah. They're not going to be an expert. They're not going to know all the nuance of a phone call coming in. So it takes mm -hmm. time. Like both uh, Amina and Natasha have been working with us for two years now. So they really know our culture. They know all of our employees. They know when Jack's golfing for the day. They know what Al's doing. They know how to do certificates for Al. They know if I'm out of the office, they know how to take the, the proper message and get it routed to the right people. A lot of it is running triage or whatever interference for all the incoming call, calls. All the mm -hmm. mortgagee BS that you have to deal with, they, yeah. they handle that mm -hmm. on their own. So they know yeah. what they can take care of on their own, what they need to transfer over, how to document everything in Easy Links, which is our management system. And yep. uh, yeah, it takes time though, Sean. They're not gonna know day one, just like a new employee no, no, that no. you put in your office right next to your office. It's gonna take months to get them where you want them to be. For sure, for sure. I think that renewal, it's funny you brought that up because that's something uh, I have uh, Anna doing in my office now is when I get that, that letter from the mortgage company that says, hey, we haven't received the renewal from the carrier, I just forward that to Anna and say, yeah. you know what to do and she she slammed she it upload up. it to my coverage info, oh, yeah, whatever we the website is. And, yeah, yeah. I I wish more I wish more companies use that, but you know, yeah. some of them are like fax it to blah blah well, blah. You're in New York, God. right? Yeah, that's a completely different beast. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you're just talking that, all the different mortgage companies, right? Yeah, it's so many different ones, mm -hmm. and some want it faxed, some want mm -hmm. it uploaded to a portal, some say email it. So it's like a different process for everyone, but generally on the letter it states it and then we exactly. can just forward it but you know a lot of these mortgage companies they don't like to like send an email request they just like call out oh, of the blue I know. you know so, so frustrating uh, but yeah, yeah just so. um you know having your your virtual professionals back they'll have your back being there for yep. them and uh knowing you know setting the proper expectations that you're busy you have a busy agency you're going yep. to be twice as busy when you bring on your virtual professional for the first two months, true. but then it's that Very one true. step back to go 10 steps forward. Yeah. So talk to us about the growth. Yeah. You said six to 160. Yeah. And how, yeah. And how, how, what, what time frame was that? A couple years. We've been it's incredible. Only, yeah. A couple years now. Oh yeah. It's, it's a challenge. Anybody that says business is easy, we have competition and I love our, our competition it makes us better so the agency owners get a better product um but it's not easy there's a lot of sleepless nights a lot of 
what can we do to improve our culture even more? Have our people, you know, know more when they start? How can we improve our training? Mm -hmm. uh, everything. How can, how can we make more money? You know, how can we pay our VPs more, which we just did? We're paying them a lot more. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a roller coaster, just like anything, just like insurance, yeah. just like any business. It's nobody's getting rich yet. That's for sure. Even though it's a lot of people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Tro Troy, do you have a lot of um do you have a lot of agents using Savital for uh prospecting? Like you know to make like cold yeah, calls to a, businesses. That's my or... main guy here. David Carruthers. He's like I said, he's a, he's a partner with us and he helps you know, he he definitely uses a couple of our VPs to help set appointments for his team and he just had a record breaking month i believe i don't know how he does it he's just on another level of everyone out there but um he kind of pushed for the uh, telemarketing department so mm -hmm. we definitely have 10 15 agencies out there that are using our people to call set appointments for them interesting cool so, we'll have to talk offline about that more yeah so for yeah. for one of the last things I want to ask you about just around this is so for somebody listening, what's the kind of metrics that you guys use of when it's going to be a right fit? You know, what do you look for, whether it's, I mean, size or just operations of the agency? Are there certain things that you'll come in and say, oh, well, you got to operate this way for it to be a right fit for our people? Um, how does that kind of work? All right. Just like in insurance, remember when we, we all first started insurance, we would write anybody that was somewhat interested then when you get a little bit bigger have a little more revenue coming in you can be more selective so a red flag for us if, is if they've been to three or four other va companies and they've never worked out and then they they talk bad about the va company it's you know we don't want to set ourselves up for failure so we've punted on a few of those that have just complained about every they kind of have that negative vibe negative attitude that's a red red flag for us we want to go after the people that are positive, that know it's going to take time, that know, hey, that have bigger teams, they have processes already built out. Not like we can't do that for them, but they know they're going to have to take one or two hours a day talking to the person and know it's going to be real work. It's not software where you plug it in and it starts working right away and no issues, even though most software like agency Zoom, I only use 20% of agency zoom. If I took the time to learn it, it would right. be 10 times more efficient. That's the same with your virtual professional. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's def it's definitely a ton of work. Um, I think like any other employee would be right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and some of the things we might've talked about this once before, so sorry for being a little repetitive, no. here, but some of the things that helped me with, I mean, my virtual assistant specifically was, I started extremely basic when I first brought her on. I would do one uh, video call with her every day just to check in, you know, see if she would like anything done differently, um, go over the Loom videos that I created for her for training uh, specific topics. And then as I feel like as I got a little bit better and evolved a little bit more as far as how to assist in the training, then that brought up like, oh, Tango. Oh, now I can introduce like a PDF that's a step-by-step -step guide, Tango right? Now? Yep. Is it so awesome? On top of, it's awesome. On top of the Loom video. So some people who don't want to sit there and watch through a whole video, now they have the Tango. Um, and then I took it a step further and started doing like for more complicated tasks. So think of like for me in, in New York uh, with contractors, some certificates of insurance can be super complicated. Like it's not just as easy as putting the name and address. I got to do a name and address. They want primary non-contributory, waiver of sub, additional insured, uh, you know, all this additional wording uh, that's unusual. And that I would do a role-playing call and record that call. So Ooh. I would literally say, hey, Anna, here's a certificate. You know, share your screen and show me how you would do that step-by-step. And then, and then she'd walk through and I would say, oh yeah, you know, did you know you can, you could do this one thing a little bit differently to make it more efficient. Um, and I noticed that was like a That's complete brilliant. game changer. Yeah. yeah. So Take I feel time. like those three things, the loom, the tango and the, and the role playing is, is like a perfect recipe. Can for I use that? VA. Yes, sir. Do I have to say Sean came up with it? Sure. <laughs> <Every time? laughs> 
<laughs> every other time. Every, every time. Every other time. Yeah, we're gonna run with that. <laughs> that is brilliant. But yeah, that's, no, that's what works. It's Steven, you were gonna say something. Sorry. No, no, I was gonna hit Troy with the last question. Out of respect of his time, as we look to wrap this up, Troy. Every time we have somebody on the podcast here, we hit him with this last question. If we took you all the way back to the beginning, first day at, at the insurance agency, what is one thing that you think you would do differently looking back now through your experience? It's so easy. It would be the exact thing I've already talked about, but it would be instead of two hours a night knocking on doors, it would be probably five hours and just don't even take your head up to create a process for people to handle all your leads, but just only focus on the lead gen and just get so many damn leads and don't get complacent when you have so much revenue coming in just keep the funnel pumping with leads and yeah at least two years of five hours a day door knocking is how i would do it different because i basically did two hours with one hour a day door knocking yeah so i love that steven how many times have we heard in a different in a different way troy how many times now have we heard block out time for prospecting more focus on sales focus on revenue more, 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 mm -hmm. more. I mean, it's been like a trend. I would say over the last month of people we've talked to who have blown up their agencies pretty quickly, although they've all done it in a different way. The common theme was more, you should be prospecting more. Discipline yeah. And consistency. yeah yep. you don't have to be a salesperson. If you want to be an agency owner and it doesn't have to be the door knocking, that's just what I'm good at. Get a couple of licensed sales guys and say, I will get each of you five leads a day. Who can say that really? What, what companies out there do that? Which is beautiful because then you don't have to pay them renewals and all this other stuff. Say, I'll get you five leads a day and you're going to, you're going to track them, put them in your CRM and ask them for referrals. And that's how you're going to make a lot of money with my agency. And then when you get mm -hmm. 10 leads a day, get 15, add one more salesperson. Say, I'll give you five leads a day. That holds you accountable. You got to knock on door seat. One of the bigger challenges with me is I was getting my own leads and then I had to sell them, which is always the tricky, like the next day I have appointments with people, so I can't go out and knock on doors that next day. And then you get lazy. But if you only focus on the lead gen, get salespeople to handle the leads, that's what I would have done different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. Troy, thanks very much for taking the time to join us. For anybody who wants to get in touch with you, learn more about Savital, just learn more about yourself, learn about Kirk Cousins, all the good stuff. What's the best way to get in touch with you? Um, I'll give you my cell, 612-408-9000. 612-408-9000. You can call or text me. Awesome. We'll be good to go. I'd love to talk to you about, I can show you guys that that uh, Google review signature line. If you have specific questions on the Google reviews, let me know, or VAs, or Kirk, Kirk Cousins. Those are my three things I talk about. <laughs> <laughs> love well, it. Love it, love it. Well, thanks again, Troy, for taking the time. Everybody, that's another episode of the Scratch Agency Podcast. Do us a favor, like the show, share the show, and subscribe. Most importantly, remember to dig down deep, believe in yourself, and own your own future. We'll see you next week. Take care.